Another day and another Devastator, dude. A lot of Ds there. And we're going to start off looking at this Devastator with this guy. It is the NBK knockoff of the third party generation toy character known as Bulldozer, who in itself is a representation of the Transformers, Decepticon, Constructagon, Destruct. Constructicon Devastator team member known as Bone Crusher. Boy, that was a long introduction. And he's going to be our focus in the latest Got By True review. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. GotBot. As always, please like, comment, share, and of course, subscribe. Stick around. Have some fun with us on the channel. See what it is that catches your interest. Check out Machinery of Man, The Everything Factor, and me everywhere, as well as Transformers, Collectors, and L. Okay, so this is, this is a, a KO of a third-party bone crusher, and it's not the first one that was released in the NBK line. So why are we starting with this guy? Because... Undoubtedly, we have several options for Devastator. Looking back a few years, you have something like Green Giant. I think that's what it was called. Then you have something like the Toy World Constructor and the actual Generation Toy Gravity Builder. Arguably, both fit in very nicely with Masterpiece Collections, especially Constructor especially if he doesn't have those silver thighs and he has the green ones. But I'm going to compare each of these guys with their counterpart from the Titan-class Devastator from Combiner Wars. And we're going to sort of have a race to see if the KO or the Combiner Wars Devastator is better. Why am I doing that comparison? Because I kind of feel like that this KO, though the colors are changed and it's simplified, I feel like it is another viable option for a chug collection. So perhaps the most accurate thing to actually compare to would be our other kind of chug entry for a Devastator. Not to say that there isn't others, but hey, why not compare to the official? I'm not com going to compare to Constructor or Gravity Builder for two reasons. One, I don't have either of those. But two, I don't think it's really fair because this is simplified. I like, I like this. I think it's cool. It, it certainly looks fantastic, and it certainly looks like a Constructicon. The silhouette is kind of stylized. The coloring is certainly different, even from the actual Gravity Builder. And as strong as this is, it's not perfect. Now, we're going to start off looking at this guy in his vehicle mode. Then we're going to go to the robot mode. And then quickly work our way back because it's easier to get into limb mode from vehicle mode. And I kind of want to leave these guys in limb mode uh, at the end of this thing. I'm not going to give the marks for paint apps, posability, playability, and transformation right away. I'm going to wait and kind of do that all together with the robot mode. Anyway, there's enough of kind of explanation of how I'm handling this guy and the others in the set. Let's head over to the table and take a closer look at him. All right, so we're going to try and kick things off here with this guy. This is the NBK-03, which is a knockoff of the Generation toy character called Bulldozer, who itself is a third-party representation of the Transformers Decepticon Constructicon Devastator member known as Bone Crusher. And because that's a mouthful, I'm just going to call this guy Bone Crusher. This is a cheaper version of that Generation Toy incarnation of Bone Crusher. A simplified version. And the colors have been altered here as well. You will notice, for example, that he has purple on his tractor part. I don't even know what to call that. Now, why am I starting off with this guy? Because that's not the way the releases happened. Well, I do have the 
Combiner Wars Titan Class Devastator. So I'm doing this in the same order that I did those characters. And when I done those characters, I started off looking at Bone Crusher. As a matter of fact, here we have the original and here we have the NBK version and like the colors are off here, there's more purple than there should be. Now it's co cool to see so many colors playing off each other, but by rights, for accuracy, we really should have kind of a sea of green for old Bone Crusher here. So, you know, and this one's bigger, at least in tractor mode. Now we're going to see this guy again in limb mode and in robot mode, but for now, Let's just focus again on this dude for a minute. Now, he does come with uh, a couple of things. His blaster, which we'll see later. He also comes with instructions, which we'll see later. But for now, I just wanted to show, and I know that this is kind of outside the ordinary of how I usually do these things, but this guy's a little outside the ordinary. He also comes with this. It is technically the forearm of Devastator. The fist is inside but it can attach to a plug right here. Now you'll notice that it's mostly, um, I guess, oriented in a vertical position and the opening is oriented in a vertical position. What you can do is put that on over and then turn this piece and it locks it into place. So we're going to slide that on over and then basically we're turning the whole thing. Now, Here's the thing, the kind of black square turns and this piece turns. They can turn independently or together. So when you turn this back, you want to kind of make sure that you don't turn the black piece back with it or you'll pull this right off. Assuming you just turn the gray piece, this is now locked on there rather securely. And this is what we have for the tractor mode. I, like this is strange, this little trailer thing, but like at least it's a way to incorporate it and like I'm okay with that. It's strange, yes, but I'm all right with it because at least it incorporates somewhere. By the way, in this mode, his blaster, though we haven't seen it yet, goes stored up underneath right here. Very nice storage, out of the way, you don't see it. Now, the easiest thing to do is to put this guy in his limb mode, but since that's how I want to end things, we're gonna take the hard route and put this guy in his robot mode. You will notice I have not given him a mark yet for his paint apps, nor am I. I'm going to give all three marks and his overall score kind of toward the end of things. Stick around, you'll see, you'll see. Just. Just trust me, man. You'll see. So, we're going to convert this guy. This is so how, in fact, do we do the transformation? Well, we begin by untabbing this and folding it back. There's a little round tab there, and there's a little hole in this section up here. Pretty simple. We do that on both sides. Fold those up. Then we split this piece and bring it up. And then... Though the instructions say to just kind of open the arms, that's not exactly what you do. You have to lift the arms up. There's a couple of little tabs down here that go into holes in this purple piece. So you lift the arms up and then you can swing them around. Sort of ingenious, really. We can untab the legs, if you haven't done so already. And the way the legs are tabbed in is we have a little Maybe I can get that arm out of the way. We have a little round hole right there. There's a tab on the inside of the tread that goes into that little round hole. So we can take these and like swing them down around. Here, we'll get this arm back here again. Now that we have this done, we can take the body here. We should be able to, I believe, straighten it up. Oh, we pick up, sorry, we pick up the, the head piece here. And before we can flip this back, we actually need to rotate the top of the body around. And we need to remove his blaster from up there. Now we can straighten the body up. And when we straighten up, it should slot up directly inside here. It is 
Bit of a chore to do. He's not the easiest dude to hold on to, really. There. To get that in. Woo! Okay. Then we come here and we should just flip down the tread, but it does like to pop off. But we flip that tread down. We turn this up on the side. And then we flip that tread down. And we should have a leg that looks like this. On the other side, we flip that tread down. We flip that tread down. And of course we have this up on the side. Wow. We flip down that piece and we rotate the ankle. We flip down this cover here and we rotate the ankle around. And then we just straighten up the feet and the heel. We straighten up the feet and the heel. They're both on like ball joints, so. Then we gotta come up here and both hips here and over here are on sliders. And you need to kind of slide them down at an angle to the middle and they will or they should peg into each other. And when you're all done, you should have his lower body finished. Now I need to adjust things so that we can see his upper body and get that done. Okay, so now we're at the upper body. And the very first thing to note is that he has an enormous backpack if you leave that piece on. But the instructions say to leave that piece on. You can take it off, but I'm gonna leave it on now for the sake of being accurate, I suppose. Now we have the arms. <laughs> and with the arms, really, what you're looking to do is push this section in. There's a gray, let's see if I can explain this. There's a gray circular tab right here. It goes into a slot on the side of the chest. It should lock it in. And then we can swing the arm down. Same on the other side. This gray tab goes into this slot on the chest. We'll bring it down and then we should be able to extend the arm and on this side extend the arm rotate it around and rotate it around then we want to deal with The, I don't know what we call this. I don't even know what this is called, the bucket? I don't know what it's called. I don't, I'm not up on my tractor lingo, sorry. But we fold that all the way in. And we do the same on the other side. We come over and there's a section here and we fold it all the way in. And then we're going to bring this bucket section up on the back. And when we do, what we have in the bucket is a circular peg. It goes into a slot on the back of the shoulder. So we bring that up over. And if we have it all lined up correctly, which is a little hard to see right here. There. That goes in there. And we do the same on the other side. We make sure we have it all lined up correctly. And that goes in there. Then all we have left are his hands, thankfully. And for his hands, we just open that section, fold out his hand, close it up, rotate it, Open that section, fold out the hand, close it up, and rotate it. 
and in the end, whew, boom, here we have Bone Crusher. Now, I need to kind of get the feet correct there, which is a little easier said than done with this guy. Especially when you have that backpack on, because he wants to do this. I, he does not want to stand with that backpack on. I'm gonna try and get this in a little bit closer. Actually, before we do that, I'm gonna show what he comes with. And this accessory was plugged up underneath in vehicle mode. When we get it out and open it out, it becomes his blaster. It's actually molded quite nicely, and I like the color of black and gray. Black and silver might have been nicer, but hey, I can live with black and gray. He also comes with these instructions, which are fine. It gives you an image of his robot and his vehicle, and when you open it up, you have nice, large images. What you start with, what you end with. And everything is highlighted actually pretty nicely. These are good instructions. And hey, what do you know, I managed to get this guy stood up, like, correctly, like, accurately, nice, and here he is in robot mode next to the official Bone Crusher, and you can see they're, they're similar in size, I mean, this guy's about a Voyager, he's a bulky Voyager, but he's about a Voyager, I don't know, I mean, they look good. Obviously, this is more accurate. It's more green. The NBK one is more stylized. It is more purple-ish, I guess. Now, I'm going to give the marks now, and then we're going to go back to the limb modes. For paint apps, for the NBK, I'll take this guy back out of it. For paint apps for the NBK, like, I think you would know it's a Constructicon. I don't know if you'd necessarily know that it's Bone Crusher. It, it looks nice, but I, I don't know how well it embodies the character per se. Still, once you see what his vehicle mode is, you'd be like, oh yeah, that's Bone Crusher, sure. It's, it's good, it looks nice, it looks pretty crisp, it's interesting, especially considering that it's a knockoff. I'm gonna say, that it has paint apps of about, I'm gonna give it an eight. I'm gonna give it an eight, because I, I do like it. It's not that it's the most accurate, but it's nice. What about his transformation? <sighs> to get to this mode and to get back is, it's not that it's hard, because it's not. It's just that it's, you need to know what you're doing. Like you need to do it a few times and be familiar with it, that's all. To get to limb mode is super duper easy. I'm going to say that his transformation is easily a 9. Now, for the actual Bone Crusher, just so we can compare here, I've given his paint apps an 8. i would also given his transformation a 9. Though a lot of people dislike his hips and can't get them to peg together, there is a strategy to do it. And I did explain that in the Bone Crusher review in episode 15. What about the articulation for this guy? Well, the head is sort of kept in there. It's on a ball joint, like it can look down and up. It can go left and right, but it's kind of encapsulated in this. The arms can go all the way around. Both of them can do that. They can, it's, this is really weird, but it doesn't really hurt articulation. You just have to kind of know what you're doing. We have a nice deep elbow over 90 degrees. We do have a bicep swivel, but that does get sort of hindered with this, kinda, sort of. Again, you need to know what you're doing. The wrists, they do rotate. Yeah, does he have a waist? He has a waist, but because of his conversion, he also has an upper chest rotation. So I think that's really cool. The legs, they, they can't go forward very far, they can't go back very far, there is a thigh rotation, we do have a nice super deep knee, love that knee actually, like, 
And we have like molding in here for like a knee hinge. I think that's fantastic. We do have toe tilt. I don't know how much it helps him because he is so back heavy if you leave that piece on. He has pretty much everything you could want. Oh, and he can go out to the sides that far. The hip section of this guy is where he is the most limited. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Depending on the poses that you want to try and get, he can get uh, like a couple of relatively dynamic ones, I guess. Like something like that, maybe. I don't know how dynamic that is. If you, if you put that up. I don't know, something like that, maybe, maybe. His balance is very tedious with that thing on his back. I'm gonna give his articulation about a seven and a half. I don't like the fact that he's so precarious. I don't like the hips. It's about a seven and a half. The overall score for the actual Bone Crusher was nine. I thought he was a good figure. I still think he's a good figure. The overall score for this guy, well, we had I believe it was an, uh, like an 8 for his paint apps, I think. We had a 9 for his transformation. We had about a 7.5 for, for his articulation. This guy's about an 8. The actual Bone Crusher, to me, because I know how to handle his hips, I think he's about a 9. This guy's about an 8. Still not a bad figure, especially since this is, you know, like a, a cheaper version of what was a fantastic entry. Now, we have to get this guy technically back into vehicle mode in order to get him into limb mode, and that's what we're gonna do right now. I'm gonna try and do that relatively quickly. We open this up, and we turn the hand so that the, say the palm would be facing out, and we fold this in, and we close it up. We do the same over here. We fold it in, and we close it up. We pick these sections off of the shoulders and if I can get it off of the shoulders. I'll say this, all the joints are nice and tight on the guy. The arms, they collapse up again and then this little lip here goes up over the edge here. And that should secure this into place. Same thing here. Oh, I'm sorry. You need to turn around this way and then the lip secures it. I'm sorry. Over here, rotate the arm around and then the lip secures it. My mistake. So we have that done. We can lift this down off of his back for now. We can lift this back over his head for now. We're going to lift these up and we're going to rotate the whole chest around again. We're going to untab those shoulders from the section that they were in. We're going to rotate them so that they're down and we're going to bring them all the way back in here together. And then these two sections that are his arms, they tab together. Now we're gonna deal with that lower body and hopefully anything you missed going from robot to vehicle you're going to kind of be able to pick up on now so i hope we take these hips and we slide them back up to the outside we fold up that tread and we fold up this tread we do the same thing over here. We straighten up the leg and we fold up that tread and we fold up that tread. Then we have to turn the feet again. By the way, you'll notice that we have little metal rollers on the bottom that will help orient you very shortly. Okay, so now that we have that done, we can fold these heel sections back in and we're just gonna kind of leave the toes and whatnot for now. We're going to begin to angle these back a little bit because now we're going to bring all of that forward. When we bring it forward, we have the two little starts like down under right here. And we will bring all of this forward 
angle the legs down and we should be able to take both of these arms now and slap them down into position. Just like that. Then we come to these sections on the side and we're going to bring them back and we have a peg right here and that will go into that slot right there. And I should also point this out I guess. We have a little notch and a peg on the toe and a little notch and a peg on the toe. So they'll also go together. Okay, so now that we have him back in his bulldozer mode, we get to do the easy part, the beautiful part, and that's putting him in limb mode. He's the left arm of Devastator, as we all know, and it's super duper easy. We come to the back here and we open this up. We flip this out. <clears throat> we do that again. We have to... Um, you know, if we want a full elbow, then we're going to have to turn this. We do not want to turn this section in here. Just this. And now we have a full elbow. Uh, actually, I guess if he's the left arm, we want to do it this way, don't we? Do it this way and turn the hand this way. As for his combiner peg, it's up underneath here. You bring it out. It's a bit of a challenge to get it out. You should be able to, once you have it out this far, you should be able to kind of pull up on it and out more, and that gets it extended the whole way. Devastator arm. I'm not going to go through all the articulation except to say he has individually articulated fingers, which is great. But this is it. This is him in arm mode. I dig it. I think it's a very, very cool looking arm. It's big, it's bulky, it is hench. Now, at the end of the day, here he is next to the official arm for Devastator. Uh, it's definitely bulkier, bigger. You know, there's no, absolutely no doubt about it. It is more stylized. It probably looks cooler. I said that this guy's a 9. Now, if you don't like his hips, or you never figured out his hips, he's definitely not a 9 for you. He's probably more like a 4. In that case, this is definitely the better bone crusher sitting at an 8. But, if you did figure out the hips of this guy, he works pretty great. He has excellent leg articulation and all of the other articulation that this dude has. The only reason that this guy is even a little bit lower than this guy is because this guy has really kind of lackluster hips for going forward and back. I don't know. Articulation means a lot to me, I suppose. Neither of them are bad, though. Honestly, neither of them are bad. Not to say that there isn't better. I mean, we do have the actual Generation Toy version. We do have that Toy World version. I don't know, I've never touched like Green Giant, so <laughs> I don't know how good that is. But out of these two, I think they're both fine. Like, you know, there's nothing particularly wrong with either of them. As a limb for Devastator, I think this guy wins just because it looks more menacing and bulky and detailed. Anyway, there you go. There's the comparisons in tractor mode, in robot mode, and in limb mode for Bone Crusher and Bulldozer. And here we are once again. And we have our not Bone Crusher in hand with his huge egregious backpack. Again, like I said before, you can leave this on or take it off. I think it's nice that you can leave it on even if it gives him a huge backpack. If that really bothers you, then take it off and lay it aside, man. It's, it's good. There's no doubt that it's good and it's an interesting conversion and it has interesting kind of bits of in engineering, especially the way that these like kind of piston pieces work on the side of the arms so that you still get a pretty decent range of articulation there. I like a waist articulation and a chest swivel. That's fantastic. In fact, the only kind of criticisms and weaknesses I can levy against the guy, besides for the huge backpack, is that the colors are indeed slightly off. You know, I don't think you would just guess that this is Bone Crusher in this mode. You might, but I don't think I would. And I really wish that the hips 
had a better range of articulation. Now, of course, you can kind of cheat it by uh, leaving the hips open out to the side like you would for vehicle mode, but I can't kind of give that as, hey, good hip, you know, movement forward and back because that's not really the way it's supposed to be transformed in robot mode. And it looks a little funny having his legs, you know, kind of that wide. This looks more natural. The actual one, arguable if he's a nine. I think he is because I know how to handle the hips of the actual bone crusher and that makes him markedly better. This guy is an eight by comparison. The race is very close so far. Now you might be watching this saying, hey, no, if this guy's an eight, the actual bone crusher is like a two or three because those hips are terrible. And granted, if your experience is those hips being as terrible as most people have experienced, then this guy is definitely significantly better. The materials feel great. That's another thing that it has going for it. And really, we don't have any like hollow pieces that it, I, are visible at least. Like right now, there's nothing in his forearms, but you don't see that. Strong argument and a strong case can be made for this. And while I kind of give both of them a 9 and an 8 respectively, even those marks are kind of subject to a little bit of shifting. They're very, very close to each other in terms of being decent representations of Bone Crusher, but for very different reasons. Right now, based on my scale, the Combiner Wars one just wins because it is indeed more accurate and it does have better hip articulation. There's no den den eh, denying that. So we're going to move on to the second part. And the second part is going to be the other arm. That, of course, would be Scavenger, or not Scavenger, if you will. And we'll see how those two compare. Anyway, let me know what you think about this guy. As always, I love to hear from you guys. I thank you very much for giving me some of your extremely valuable time. Please, once again, I'm going to say subscribe. It is a tremendous help to me. And I very much look forward to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit right here inside the videos.